Hey everybody, welcome back. Matt here with Adventure Cruiser. Let's talk a little bit about BK Technologies and the radios they produce. If you live in a western state like I do, chances are you have wildfires. And with wildfires comes this radio. This has been the staple for CAL FIRE and the U.S. Forest Service and a number of other agencies for decades. Great radio. It's a beast. So this radio comes in analog and digital for the last version released. You can still find new versions of that on eBay for around $4,000 because BK Technology stopped making them and somebody on eBay said, hey, I want to make a lot of money screwing somebody. <clears throat> Sorry. The radio that replaced this workhorse was this guy, the KNG. The KNG offered more features. It offered a better display. It offered a menu. It offered a lot. This was allegedly produced in order to win a TSA contract. I don't know that to be 100% true, but I heard it, and it wasn't on the internet, so must be true. The KNG2 replaced the KNG, and it brought some new features about. The KNG could have a GPS attached through the remote speaker mic. However, the RSM was expensive, and if any of you have ever been on a fire site, you know what happens to RSMs. Those are the dangly things that get caught in the door and wiped off by trees. The KNG2 has a built-in GPS. The antenna for the GPS is part of the antenna of the radio itself. It also offers Bluetooth, noise cancellation, a louder speaker, and a clearer display. We'll get into the display in a little bit. A couple of years ago, BK Technologies released the BKR5000 to replace the, B, the KNG2. The BKR5000 has some notable improvements, including better noise cancellation, a louder speaker, a larger, brighter display, and uh, reconfiguring the buttons. The BKR5000 also boasts a top display as well. Setting this workhorse aside, so the KNG, the KNG2, and the BKR are still really great radios. There are some feature differences between them. Let's go through those real fast. The KNG2 has two programmable buttons plus the push to talk. The KNG2 has three plus a push to talk. Top, middle, push to talk, and bottom. The BKR5000 also has three, but they're in the opposite configuration. One on top, push to talk, and two on the bottom. These are raised buttons. Sorry, these are raised bumps, and it is kind of nice. When you're not wearing gloves, you can tell which button you're pushing if you accidentally get up and down mixed up in the dark. Meh, oh well. I still like that they have um, braille on the buttons. So the KNG has a black and white or black and green display. It's um, very adequate, and by pushing the hotkeys, you can select whatever you want. The hotkeys are programmable. You can change what is written under each one. The KNG2 has a color display. That's a really bright color display. You can set the display on, off, auto dimming, light sensing, all kinds of cool features. And the BKR5000 has the same as the KNG2. Um, color display that's bigger, brighter, but it has the same configuration where the buttons are all programmable to the menu items listed below. Now to move to the top, there's a difference between these two radios. This is the standard version. This is the command version. The command version was designed for fire agencies who have a lot of mutual aid and they can set up a command zone saying, this is our command channel, TAC1, TAC2, or whatever is assigned to the fire ground, and they can have one zone with everything they need in it already. But I digress. The KNG features two toggle switches, which are very reminiscent of its big brother. The toggle switches are programmable to a number of features, but they suggest you do scan and priority select. Um, I have scan and zone scan. The non-command version has a hard stop at the end of 1 and 16 on either end of the spectrum. 
and then a volume and power button. The KMG2 has a very similar configuration, but again, since this is the command version, I have a larger emergency button and I have longer toggles. But my favorite feature is that I can turn the channel knob an infinite number of times, but it will beep when I reach the end. The BKR5000 changes everything. It's entirely different than its three predecessors. You still have your volume, you still have your uh, ring switch for secure or clear transmissions or direct or whatever you want to set it to. Very programmable switch. And that's over here on the side. But it has something new that I have yet to see on another radio, at least not clearly defined. This changes your zone. You can have it pre-programmed to whatever zone you want. And I think that's kind of cool. It's growing on me. I did miss the toggles on the top initially. I really did. I hated them when I first got my first BK radio. I thought they were kind of cheesy, but now I really like them. But this is definitely growing on me. As you can tell, the emergency button is also slightly larger. They claim for gloved hands. Um, I use it for nuisance delete when I'm scanning. There's a different RF board in these two radios. Antenna on the right versus on the left. Um, there was a rumor that there was a challenge getting the RF boards in VHF for this radio during the pandemic and that they had to go to a different source and this is what they wound up with. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I will tell you that in tests, this radio does a better job of receiving transmissions. Keep in mind, both have the extended BK antenna, but this one does a better job of receiving transmissions that are on the fringe than this one. It also has, again, the louder speaker, um, better noise cancellation, all those things. Now let's take a look at the other side. These two radios have interchangeable batteries. This one is the standard, this is the slimline. They have the same RSM connector. This changes that. This has a much larger platform for an RSM and an entirely different battery configuration. These have historically had AA clamshells, which is what this guy is, a really big AA pack. And in this radio, I do not have a AA clamshell in it right now, but this would slide out. You fill it full of AA's, slide it back in, you're good to go. Very, very helpful in a wildland fire setting when you don't have chargers. Those batteries work on both of these radios. The BKR5000 is different. BKR5000 has a removable battery in the bottom and back, back bottom. So it still does have a AA clamshell that is large. This one holds 12 AA batteries and I'm told it lasts longer than the AA clamshell for that radio. It is slightly large, if I'm being perfectly honest, when it's on the radio. But when you compare it to its predecessor, it's not that bad. It's kind of the same size. Now, personally, I really like this configuration. It's not that different. And this is worlds ahead of this one. So let's talk programming. All of these radios have the ability to have FPP or front panel programming if enabled in the computer software, res or radio editing software. All three of these radios, don't tell anybody, but this one's not VHF. If it were VHF though, all three of these radios could use the exact same code plug. You open res, you go to options and you change the radio type to a KNG, a KNG2, or a BKR5000. All the hard work's done. You may still have to change what the switches and buttons do on these two specifically. These are pretty close. But that's nothing. It's so easy to have the same code plug for the KNG, the KNG2, the BKR5000, and even the KNG-M series mobile radios. I can write one code plug for this and then send it to this and my mobile radio. I think that's fantastic. Something that I really like about 
the BK Technologies radios is that they're friendly. They play well with others. For instance, if I want to use a Bluetooth headset, I can use my Aftershocks and pair it wirelessly to either of these radios. Now, keep in mind, Bluetooth is an option on this one. I believe it's standard on this one. But that's not something I could do with other radio brands. I really like that. I think that that's very forward thinking on their part. Again, these two have noise cancellation. This one does not. These two have Bluetooth. This is an option. This does not. These two have GPS. This has GPS through an RSM. These two have color displays. This does not. This one has superior audio reception and noise cancellation. Though this one still does have noise cancellation, this one does not. So let me just show you something real quickly. In order to program this radio from the radio, first you have to enable all this in res, so don't just buy one thinking it's ready to go. Okay. Go into your menus. And let's see here. I mean, look at all those features you can have set up. You try doing this on another radio. Now, I don't claim to know all radios, but this is super easy. So let's go into keypad programming just for a second. Okay, now, in order to abide by FCC rules, you have to have a programming code in order to access that. That's pretty normal. But now you can go through here and um, program anything you want. Keypad programming. I go change a channel. I'm going to add a channel. I'm going to add it to paragliding. I'm going to do channel six. Channel six added. I'm going to edit that channel. And now I go through here real easily, add my frequencies, bandwidth, power, everything. Now I've done FPP on other brands and I get it, others have it, but I really think that this one is the simplest version of FPP. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you've got any of these radios, consider yourself blessed. They're great quality and the manufacturer is top notch. I really like BK Technologies. Check them out at bktechnologies.com and um, let me know if you have any questions or you wanna see anything else done with these. Thanks and take care.